So last week I saw this tweet on Twitter from Jessica from How to ADHD and she talked about how it's like you can't out productivity ADHD. Like it doesn't exist. You have to just figure things out for yourself. And that really was impactful to me because I have spent the last couple of years obviously making Notion content, making ADHD content, and I haven't found the solution because you can't outsmart ADHD. So this video is kind of talking about that as well as the tools that I have found that have helped, maybe not cured my ADHD or maybe not actually found the, the best solution because I'm honestly at the point where I haven't found the right solution yet. But I wanna share my journey and what I have found so far at least in terms of the things that have helped me along the way, the books that I've read, the tools that I've used, and that's what this video is gonna be about. It's part two of our five-part series on Notion Mastery. I will be talking about Notion itself as well and how I do my to-do lists, but I wanted to kind of talk about the topic of productivity in relation to ADHD, in relation to Notion, and just as a concept overall, because I think it's one that I've evolved over time and I wanna share some of my resources in this video. One of the things that I wanna say is that Time management and my to-do list and prioritization are the three things I probably struggle with the most along with focus. Um, I know a lot of people struggle with them too. I just wanna say that this is still an ongoing thing for me and I have not figured it out. There's most days I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing today? <laughs> and so I just wanna say that, you know, I have figured some things out and have done well. And then there's times where I haven't. The first thing that I want to talk about is the idea of setting goals, because I think that is the thing that I have learned the most about in the last couple of years is having a good goal setting structure does help you know a little bit more of how to prioritize your time as well as what are the steps to take to even get there. So I actually did a video a couple of months ago on goal setting. I highly recommend it. I think it really has um, remained the same for me, but I wanted to talk about that a little bit today because one of the things that I like to do is having um, you know, goals, but also deadlines. I don't know about you, I do well when I have a deadline um, because that is like, like, it's kind of that pressure. I personally work better um, as a procrastinator when I have um, something that's due by a certain time because I know as long as I have announced it to the world that it's due, if I posted it on social, for example, this series that I'm doing, I posted it in advance and said, hey, these are the videos that are coming out and these are the days that they're coming out. And that has forced me to actually make them because I have announced them to my audience and I feel a ton of guilt if I don't actually get them done by that time. Procrastination is something that actually does fuel me and I do think it fuels a lot of people as well with ADHD. One of the things that I've been hearing a lot about is the difference between motivation and discipline and Honestly, I struggle with both. <laughs> some days I'm just not motivated, the energy's not there. Um, and then some days the discipline, it's like you just, it doesn't always work. Sometimes you get distracted or something pops up and then you're just whoop, going over there. So figuring out exactly what that looks like to you is really important. So I wanted to talk specifically today a little bit about using Notion for your to-do list. And there's kind of three steps in this process. Um, once you've kind of figured out your goals, which Again, I would watch that goal setting video below. There's kind of three step process. The first one is brain dump and closing your open loops. I read a book called Redeeming Productivity where he talked about closing open loops and that really helped me be like, there's always open loops of things that I have in my head. So brain dumping, writing it down, there's a couple different ways you can do this. One thing actually that my dad actually is really like big in is getting these yellow pads, yellow legal pads. He has like 50 of them at our house and he'll just take a fresh one and just write out all the stuff that's in his head. This is very, very helpful. I also recently bought like a really big whiteboard um, that I just, like it's not on the wall or anything, I can just use it. But if there's ever like a time where my brain just feels completely full, using that to brain dump and get all those thoughts out of your head, like, oh, I gotta do that, oh, I gotta do that, oh, I gotta do that getting them out and on paper really, really helps. Stop keeping them in your head because that is gonna drive you insane. Then step two is figuring out your goals. And I we've talked about this, the outcome goals, the progress goals, but really figuring out which ones matter the most for you. Like what are, I know prioritization is like a whole topic that we could get into, which again, I struggle with, but figuring out like, if you didn't get it done, actually I learned this from somebody, if you didn't get that done, like what would be the worst thing to happen <laughs> like in order, like if you didn't get that done? So think about it backwards and being like, if I didn't accomplish this task, 
like what would what would happen like what would the the negative output of that be so prioritizing it in almost like the negative way versus the positive way is actually a way to prioritize like for example if you didn't get back to a client and they drop you as a client that would be really really bad versus oh i didn't put up that instagram post today that maybe maybe it may or may not matter right so it's like which is the more important thing from a negative perspective actually really helps you kind of figure out, okay, well, this is the most important thing to do. Another thing to do is um, breaking down tasks into smaller tasks. I actually found out about this website. I haven't used it yet. It's called Goblin Tasks. I keep seeing it in all my ADHD Facebook groups I'm in. And basically it's talking about how it, you write out a task and it actually breaks it down into smaller tasks. I think that's really helpful to look at because sometimes it's like, wait, like for example, I uh, have to renew my passport and like, I've literally been, I'm not kidding, procrastinating for three years on it because I either don't have the paperwork or I, I didn't take the photo. And now finally in the next two weeks, I'm gonna have to get it. So it's like, I actually have to put all those little steps together to actually renew my passport. It's not just renew your passport. You have to get all the documentation. You have to get the photo. So there's a lot of steps along the way to even get to the point where you renew a passport. So I think sometimes we, we forget that there are steps within the steps. Um, that's the nice thing about Notion with like subtasks is you could start doing that where you have tasks within tasks, but I don't know. I'm not the kind of person that needs to write down every little task, but maybe you are. So I want to move into Notion and show you guys specifically how I've set up my to-do list and my task list just so you can see how I've set it up. Okay, so this is my current view of my task list. Now, it might seem like, what the heck? But basically what I've done is I've, again, organized everything into my 13 pillars. If you haven't watched my color coding video, highly recommend that. It explains everything about the pillars system that I use. But what I've done is I filtered it so that I have, so in this category, I have all my tasks. You can like see that I have different categories. These are all the things that you can see at this view. You can also just add an all tasks view, I believe, and just see everything. You can also view it by priority. So it's literally every, this is part of the template version. I didn't wanna show you guys my actual to-do list because there's probably like client names and stuff on there. So I'm just using this as the example. And what you can do is you can see that I have filtered it so that it's only showing the high priority items. Now for me, what I've realized is that there's a lot of things on my to-do list. If you, if you scroll through, there's a lot of different things on here, but the things that I really need to focus on within each of those categories, um, the high priority is really, 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 that's what I need to work on. So as you scroll through, you can see, okay, you can choose from the things that you want to do. You can add things like a due date or, you know, again, the outcome goals, the process goals. We talked about that in my previous goal setting video. You can see here that this is what I have found as of now, the best view. So this is actually in table view, but it's grouped by pillars. So I really, I, I think I saw this on somebody else's where it was grouped by something and I was like, that's a great way to view it. Where everything is kind of set up. So if you're like, all right, what do I have to do? For example, you know, um, order new passport. That's part of travel. It's actually something I do have to do. So now I can just quickly add a new item. It's already filtered to be high priority. So now if you go to the all tasks photo, you'll see it's here, order a new passport. You can drag it into a subtask. You can do whatever you want, you know, so figure out exactly how you want to structure it. There's a million ways to do this, but this is just what I found. I have a ton of videos kind of walking through again, more of this, but I just wanted to share this with you. This is part of my ADC Life Tracker template, which you can grab down below. If you don't want to set this up for yourself, it's already set up exactly like this. I have updated it in the last couple of weeks. So if you've downloaded that template before, you can download the newer version and this will be, this will automatically show up for you like this. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. You know, I, I've done a ton of content on my Notion templates um, but this specifically for doing a to-do list I think is what I found personally to be the best option for that um, specifically having you know you could even add information within each task as well so that's something that you could also do you know I've, I have a whole video on recurring tasks as well as subtasks so make sure to check out those videos as well I just wanted to run through specifically how I personally do to-do lists and this whole video is kind of more about my productivity setup and also just how to structure and think about to-do lists in your life doing that brain dump and having those open loops clicked off maybe putting it first on a piece of paper and then copying it into notion is a great way to do that as well 
So I hope that this is helpful um, walking through kind of how my, my new Notion setup is, is set up for myself. Okay, I wanted to also explore some additional productivity hacks. Number one is optimizing your workspace. There's a couple different ways you can do this. Number one, making it someplace you wanna work. So making it cute, like I've made my office. You guys have probably seen my office tour. If you haven't, I'll link it below. I have like a walking treadmill um, that like allows me to work um, if there's days where I just can't focus. For another one, I sometimes go to coffee shops or co-working spaces or even the library. I actually rented out a room in the library the other day because I had to get stuff done and I told myself I could not leave that room until I finished it. So that was actually really motivating. Another thing is body doubling, whether that's in person or doing something online where you do work in sprints. You join um, a body doubling group where you basically are in the same room as somebody or on a Zoom call with somebody. By having their presence there, it really could help you focus and get stuff done. Another one is utilizing AI. I don't know if you guys have utilized ChatGPT or some of these other apps, but honestly, ChatGPT helped me. Um, I put in all my thoughts about this video and it kind of helped me organize the structure of this video, which was very helpful because I had so many ideas and I didn't know how to structure it. So having um, AI help you kind of break down even the tasks like this goblin, goblin tasks or using ChatGPT to kind of help you get started when you're stuck is so, so, so valuable. You can also set up things like Zapier to make the tasks less manual and you can start to automate things. I've done a couple of videos on that. I'm hoping to do more in the future, but I think automating using the tools online can save you so much time in the long run. Another thing that's really important is having a good calendar system. Um, I'm not gonna be talking about the calendar today, but I wanted to share this quote from a book that I think is very, very helpful, but it talks about organizing your calendar as well as your task list. The other thing, and this is still something I'm still trying to figure out with Notion, is there's tasks that I have to do every single week that are recurring. Like for example, um, checking the mail, um, you know, making my bed, but then there's things like, oh, email this person or go to this place or whatever. So figuring out exactly how that works on Notion is something I'm still trying to decide is, do I set up a recurring task feature on Notion or do I just have a separate list for that? Or do I just not put it in Notion at all and just have it on a physical form? I actually just bought a laminator so like I could laminate and have a daily task list. I could put it on my phone in the reminders app. I could use Amazon Alexa. Just figuring out for myself what I want is something I'm still working on. I wanted to share some other productivity tools that I have learned from some of the books that I have read. Um, actually, I wanted to share the list of books. I'm just gonna say them out loud. You guys can look into them further, but these are the ones I'd recommend. 4,000 Hours, Redeeming Productivity, Building a Second Brain, Everything in Its Place, The 12-Week Year, Getting Things Done, and Atomic Habits. There's a couple more and I'll probably list them below, but those are the ones that kind of came to the top of my head of ones that are really helpful if you're trying to get more productive. But a few of the concepts that have helped me in the last year, um, this one actually is a struggle for me, but I do think it is helpful for some people and that's time blocking. Um, you know, setting aside maybe a day per week to do something or batching content or um, just getting a lot of things done at the same time versus um, you know, getting into hyper-focus, doing deep work, that sort of thing has been very interesting for me because instead of bouncing around from one thing to another, that has been very, very helpful to just get more done. Another concept that I really like is scary hour. Uh, I learned about this last year. Basically, this is putting an hour to get all the scary things that you don't wanna do that you've been avoiding. Maybe they don't bring a lot of dopamine or maybe there's a lot of fear or RSD. Just setting aside an hour, maybe every day or every week to be like, these are the things I have to get done that I'm scared to do um, and just doing them and then just like, like pushing yourself to do that. This one's a really interesting one. I heard about this on a podcast. It's called urge surfing. It's when you have an urge to do something, but you're actually just surfing the wave and just seeing that urge pop up and actually just moving through it. So for example, if you have an urge to pick up your phone or you have an urge to um, eat something unhealthy, just be like, I see that I have that. I'm just going to surf the wave and, 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 and move through the urge. And that actually over time can help you. One of the things I do a lot, um, I fast once a week and that is hard for me, but you know, I just keep telling myself I'm not eating today, I'm not eating today, I have an urge to eat, but I just don't eat for that day because it really does help me reset my dopamine. It really helps me reset my body. This is actually a new thing that I have gotten um, and it's a physical item. It is a lock box for my phone. I literally bought this like about a week ago and you can open it up. You just pop your phone in there. Actually, well, I have a cover on my phone, but basically you just close it 
and then you can type in the time and it literally locks it shut and you cannot open it. You can, you can put your phone in so that you can still like use it. There's little holes so you, if you absolutely need to, but I actually turned mine over so you can't even touch it at all. I've gone up to an hour doing that because otherwise sometimes I'll just like be on my phone watching YouTube when I should be working or I'll be, you know, just going on social media when I probably shouldn't be. So highly recommend it. It's like 25 bucks on Amazon. I do think it has been helpful for me, especially when I know in the moment I'm like, I need to get off this thing, but I cannot because I do think I have a phone addiction. It's a big one. Okay. So the other two that I want to talk about is energy management and optimizing dopamine. There's different times of the day. Um, men run on a 24 hour cycle. Women run on a 30 day cycle. A lot of people don't know this. So men getting the task done in the morning that you need to get done because by the end of the day, your dopamine and your energy is just at the lowest point versus women um, is different times of the month. So it's a little different for men and women. So whoever's watching this video know that you can optimize that a little bit better. And then your dopamine levels as well. Um, whether that's something that you are kind of paying attention to, like knowing when you get excited about things, knowing how, like, I just think just paying attention is so, so valuable. So I hope that this video was helpful and hopefully maybe gave you a few ideas or some resources to being a little bit more productive. But again, I want to like clarify again, productivity is not the end all goal in my, in my mind. I have, I have evolved over time on my belief around productivity because there is just more to life than being productive. I do think that there are times in our society where you do need to get things done. You do need to focus and you do need to work on things. But when we focus so much on just getting a bunch of stuff done to get even more in our to-do list, it just doesn't make sense to me. There's gentle productivity, which is a great tool. I really like that. I just heard Ali Abdal is coming out with his book called Feel Good Productivity, which is about more of like making it fun. And there's just like so much to productivity that I think our society has maybe both evolved and devolved during the pandemic because, you know, there's a lot of remote work. There's a lot of different things that have happened. And we as a society have basically made it so that we are constantly burning ourselves out, just trying to do it all. And what I've learned is like, I don't want to be working all the time. I want to have friends and a social life and have that time management so that I can get all this stuff done and then have time off. Um, I don't like to work all the time. I like passive income. I like having things done and then just putting them out in the world. Hopefully they work without me being there. So I think as I have evolved in the last couple of years, I think it's important to know that there are other options than just um, going based off of what the world considers productive and you know, hustle culture, burnout culture isn't what I subscribe to. And I just wanna make sure that people listening know that like productivity is not my goal. Like in life, I don't wanna be the most productive person, but I do think that I struggle with it and I'm trying to get better at it because I do know that in order to exist, I do need to have some sort of system and structure for myself for when I am working. So anyways, I hope that this video is helpful. This is episode two of our five part notion mastery series. I hope that this one was a little bit more about uh, some of the concepts that I think are helpful. Um, I've done a couple of videos on this before, but I kind of wanted to do an updated one because I haven't done one in a while. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and also check out our brand new bundle, which is all of our notion courses and templates, everything you need to know. And I hope that this is helpful for you guys. I'll talk to you soon.